Get ready, because there is a ton of puns in this story. This is Circumference and the Viking's Map. <clears throat> also, be prepared and apologize to any of you using headphones. This is going to hurt your ears because I've been on a bit of a Game Grumps uh, kick lately, so I'm a little obsessed with those ridiculous voices. So here we go. <clears throat> One of you! exclaimed Purr. The landscape below them lay divided into four sections. A road ran across the countryside horizontally, and a river wound through the area vertically. Nothing looks familiar, observed Radius, and we're running out of daylight. Let's camp on that knoll tonight. The grass there looks thick and soft. And the co as the cousins approached that knoll, a tangle of vines and brambles blocked their path. What's this? asked Purr, pulling aside some branches to reveal a weathered wooden door. Together they pushed it open and peeked inside. In the dim light, they could make out a musty room full of cobwebs. It's a house inside the hill, cried Radius. Just then, they heard far-off sounds of ruckus singing and laughter. Bad old Barnaby and his brigand band, we're the baddest lot in all the land. We sneak and snatch whenever we can, we're bad old Barnaby and his brigand band. In the distance, they could make out a ragged group of men marching along. Radius exclaimed, Highway robbers! Well, that was Radius. I said the wrong voice. Quick! said Purr, grabbing the candle from her saddlebag. Get inside the house! Purr shut the door and lit the candle. The room contained a bench, a barrel, and a round wooden shield. While Radius examined the shield, Purr peered into the barrel. What's this? she wondered, pulling out an old waxy leather pouch. She looked inside it. A map! The map was decorated with two unusual axes, with two blades on either end of the handle. On the back was some writing, and Purr began to read. I, Grid's Ankle, scribe of this land, have drawn this map for Saxon Yellowbeard, the Viking. <coughs> he leaves it as a path to his most valued treasure, starting at 3-0, XY. The ancient document was initialed by the Viking. Zaxon Yellowbeard? gasped Radius. Who was he? Said, asked Purr. Only the fiercest Viking warrior ever. It was said that he conquered most of Angoland, answered Radius. I thought he was just a legend. I guess he was real, said Purr. Ready to look for his treasure tomorrow? Absolutely, Radius said. Early the next morning, as they left the house on the hill, Purr noticed a flash of red between two nearby trees. What's that? she wondered. Radius shrugged. A bird? Then they looked at the map and studied the land below. How do we read this? wondered Radius. <clears throat> well, we're right here, said Purr, and she pointed to the picture of the house on the hill. But where do we go? asked Radius. I think the numbers three and zero at the bottom of the message tell us, answered Purr. There are two places on the map with a three, but I don't see any zeros anywhere, said Radius. <clears throat> the house in the hill looks like it's drawn inside a giant zero, said Purr. Let's ride up the river to the three there. They trotted along next to the bank, but they didn't see anything unusual. After a while, Purr said, this doesn't seem right. Let's go back to where we started and follow the road out to the other three. She traced her finger along the right horizontal X axe. The cousins returned to the house on the hill and took the road, passing stone mile markers along the way. They stopped at the third one. <clears throat> Purr got off her horse and took a closer look. On the back of the marker, she noted some small engravings. Radius! she exclaimed. I found Zaxxon's initials carved here along with another set of numbers. Two, negative one. Just then, they were interrupted by a very loud... Ah! Radius and Purr looked around them in surprise. Quiet, you big oaf, hissed the raspy voice from behind the tree. They'll hear us. Radius exclaimed, 
It's Barnaby's ba gang. Purr jumped on her horse and the cousins took off in a gallop down the road. After passing Milestone 6, they slowed to a walk. It isn't safe to go back, gasped Purr. But we've got to, said Radius. You were correct. The first number tells us which way to go on the X-axis. And if we want to go to the treasure, we have to return to mile two on this road. If the first number tells us which way to go on the X-axis, reasoned Radius, then the second number must tell us which way to go on the Y-axis. It's like the alphabet. X comes before Y. The next set of numbers is two, negative one. So, we get to mile marker two, we'll go down the Y-axis here. Using the guidelines, he traced the way with his finger. Together, they galloped back down the dusty road, making a hasty left turn at Milestone 2. They found themselves on a narrow lane. Only then did they slow their horses to a walk. Did you see anyone? Per asked Radius nervously. No, answered Radius. I think we're alone. The lane ended in the opening of a cave. This must, this must be our destination, said Radius, checking the map. We'll need to get a light in there, said Purr, retrieving her candle. While the horses wandered off to graze, the cousins entered the cave. What are we looking for? Purr wondered, candlelight flickering on the damp walls of the large cavern. I'm not sure, answered Radius, examining the far wall. Suddenly he paused. Carved into the wall were two more numbers, negative three and negative three. That's it, he cheered. But wait, did they hear voices and footsteps outside? Purr blew out the candle. Crouch down, she whispered urgently. The robbers entered the cave, all talking at once. Your sneeze chased the two young ones off. Can't be far now. Find the pelf, maybe they have gold or coins. Rest in this old cave first and then... A stern, gravelly voice said, Settle down, mates. Time for a bit of shut-eye. Soon loud snores could be heard. Radius nudged Purr. Let's get out of here, he whispered. They tiptoed toward the cave entrance, passing six snoring, dark shapes in the cave floor. But just as they reached the opening, Purr tripped on a few loose rocks. Well, what was that? asked the gravelly voice. Radius and Purr jumped on their ca horses ran down the lane as the stumble robbers stumbling after them. That was a terrible sentence that I just read. The two cousins whistled for their horses, then jumped onto their backs, and then appeared out of the forest. They stopped only when they arrived back in the house on the hill. I misread that first sentence, but I'm going to keep going. I think we lost them, said Purr. Radius nodded and pulled the map out of his pouch. Together, they looked for negative three negative three. Radius ran his finger three markers along the x-axis, and then three down the y-axis. That's odd, he said. It's in a lake. After they had eaten and repacked their saddlebags, the two cousins j continued their journey. They walked their horses carefully across the forest, and at last the lake came into view. They dismounted and walked to the water's edge to consult the map again. Aha, uh -huh, said Radius. Negative three, negative three must be that large rock. He pointed a short distance into the misty lake. Looks like we'll have to get wet. But once again, Barnaby's band interrupted them. Six scruffy bandits burst through the trees and barreled towards them, waving sticks. They followed us again, cried Purr. Let's hope they can't swim, Radius yelled, stuffing the map into the pouch. Together, the cousins jumped into the water and paddled towards the rock. Follow them, bellowed Barnaby. A sploosh, the six men splashed awkwardly into the lake. All right, get off me, you big whale. I'm going under. One of the robbers gurgled. While Barnaby's band floundered about... Purr and Radius pulled themselves onto the big rock, gasping. As they did, a small boat appeared it through the mist and glided towards them. A huge gray viking stood at its fat bow. A ghost! screamed the robbers. They stumbled out of the lake and fled into the forest. Z Zaxon Ye Yellowbeard? 
stammered Radius. Looking for the treasure? The ghostly warrior asked in a gruff voice. Radius nodded, trembling. The Viking motioned them aboard and took them to shore. After Purr and Radius disembark, Gaxon, Zaxon gave each of them an axe just like the ones drawn on the map. He then handed them a small wooden chest. This is the treasure of the greatest measure, he growled. Protect it. He pushed the boat away from the water's edge and disappeared into the mist. He, the cousins stood on the shore, stunned. Then slowly they opened the chest. Maps of all of Angleland exclaimed Radius. This is a treasure, added Purr. We'll never be lost again. Then, thinking about Barnaby and his men, she shivered and said, Let's get this to safety right away. One of Zaxon's maps guided them back to the castle. Entering the courtyard, they came across Sir Comference and Lady Di of Amateur, Radius's parents. <clears throat> Welcome back cried, called out Circumference. Yes, we've been we're beginning to worry, said Lady Di. We're fine. We found some cutting-edge map, began Radius. And you some sharp thinking to get a handle on our location, finished Purr. <clears throat> Daxon's axes were hung in the Great Hall, and his maps were made into Engoland's first atlas. Eventually, only the, axe, only the axe handles were drawn on the map, but everyone still referred to them as the X and Y axis. So that's the end of the actual tale, but here's the real story behind the X and Y axis and coordinate system. Mathematics that use the X and Y axis are known as the coordinate geometry or analytical geometry. It combines elements of geometry, which is the points on a grid, and algebra, using numbers to locate the points, positive and negative numbers. The numbers on the axis are both positive and negative, as I already said. Uh, where they meet in the middle at zero is co known as the point of origin. Uh, a 17th century French mathematician, René Descartes, developed the coordinate system that we use today, although maps of the coordinates were used long before in ancient Greece. And I know I probably mispronounced René Descartes, but that's how I've been saying his name for so long, and I'm not changing it now. And that is it for Circumference and the Viking map. Obviously, this is not going to be on YouTube uh, for you to download, because you have to pay to get this. Uh, I paid and bought this PDF version off of Amazon. I'll put a link or something in the description and if you are my students then there will be a cut down version uh, on our class website bye bye